is the show. Concordia is in a real place. It's a fictional place that exists in the role-playing game I created. But it feels real. The struggles they have are real. The place feels very similar. We all live in a small town with people who are in power who shouldn't be, who people who are in power who should be. And they struggle with each other, and we struggle with them. We all struggle together. We're all trying to survive. But we're all stuck together, no matter what. Concordia is a, an island of secrets. It's an island of pain, struggle, opportunity. It's where we all wish we were, but when you get there, it's not what you thought it was. Concordia is our dreams. It's where we go when we sleep. What is the show? It is Citizens of Concordia, a city based on an island off the north coast of New Brunswick. The portraits are taken from pictures from the 20s, 30s, and 40s, mostly. I picked that time because that's the time that Concordia celebrated its centennial and began the city of tomorrow. Why the 30s? The uh, prime time for Concordia is in the 1930s. Great Depression, people were flooding to the island, trying to find work. The dream was there, good pay for a good job. You didn't know what would happen to you. You'd be lost and trapped and unable to escape. You keep quiet, you do your job, keep on going. Give your family a chance and hope that the bad things that are happening all around you doesn't happen to them. TV doesn't exist yet. Radios are all the rage. Talking movies are in the theaters. All these crazy new things they're doing with radio tubes and electricity and radio. And television is just around the corner. And chemistry and plastics. industry. During the Depression, they learned how to do things cheap. The Roaring Twenties were over. Now everyone needed to have all these goods and products and services. They needed to be as cheap as possible. No one had any money. Catalogs, the Sears catalog, and cheap houses bought over mail order, power tools, doing everything yourself at home. The dream was there. Concordia celebrated its World of Tomorrow in 1935. World of Tomorrow. Modern, clean, efficient. The city was going to be a beacon to the world. But by then it was already falling apart. It was already rotten. I wanted to work with reference photos of people that really spoke to me, that really had feeling, that seemed to hold something they wanted to tell, but not something obvious, something that only I could see. I'd find reference photos of people that seemed to have a story to tell, that wanted to say something, that were speaking to us through all this time, that had something to say people that were good and bad and everything in between. People have always had problems. They live the same sort of life that we do. They all struggle to do the same thing. Everyone has families. Everyone wants to do better. Everyone is doing the same thing. Going forward, struggling, having good times, having bad times. But here we are.
the citizens of Concordia are all real people. Real problems, real things, real joys, real pain. I'd spend about two weeks with each one, watching them, studying them, finding out if they had any secrets. And sometimes they did. Sometimes they had something to say. Sometimes they didn't, and they wouldn't make it through to the painting. But if they did, they would try to tell me what they wanted you to hear and what you wanted to see in their life, what they wanted you to remember and how they felt. And nothing is ever really good or bad or evil or pure. Everyone's very complicated. No one's a bad person. Or, and their secrets weren't always evil, a hidden murder or some transgression against someone else. Sometimes it's a secret that they weren't themselves or couldn't be themselves or couldn't do what they wanted to do or couldn't be who they wanted to be. So I feel like I was their last chance to really speak to the world. One last chance to be seen, to be heard. I don't know, they're just a bunch of people. Just like you and me. Have you seen people like them? Walking up and down the street. Everyone's got a story. They all got a story to tell. sit on your wall, they look at you, you look at them, you decide, what was your deal? What did you know? What did you see? You like someone I knew? You like a part of me? I don't know. That's what I feel when I see them. There's someone I know, they're a part of me, they're someone from the past, they're someone from the future. They all got bad stories, they all got good stories. They all done bad things. They done some good things. There's a reason for all of it. They all have their reasons. So do you. So do we. <laughs> Who is Ripley Stonebrook? I don't know. Artist, musician, video, miniatures, creator, wood carver, metal worker, welder. Just need to create. Spent a lot of time doing a lot of things. Pencils, pens, watercolor, inks, airbrush. Miniature painting, digital art, illustration, role-playing games, board games, music, video, Ridley Stonebrook. What's with the charity thing? For every painting I sell, I will be donating art classes for one junior high school age student to take art classes at the Art Center. Because when I was young, I would have loved to have done the same thing. When I was eight years old, I got this book, The Art of Horror Stories, and that's when I knew I wanted to be an artist. So I draw monsters, vampires, ghosts, spooky houses, things like that. and. Art teachers didn't seem to really be interested in that, trying to deal with people telling you that your art isn't proper or correct or you're not drawing the right things, that you shouldn't be drawing monsters, you shouldn't be doing horror pictures or ghosts or vampires. You just want to make something scary or 
spooky or fun. Is that a real art? I don't know. But if it makes you react, have an emotion, have fun, it has to be real art. I want those kids to be able to have a chance to do the thing that I didn't have a chance to do. To draw monsters or ghosts or whatever they did. And not have to be judged for what they're doing or what they want to say or how they want to say it or whether they're good enough or real enough or important enough. They should be allowed to just do it. To expand their dreams or maybe tell them it's not what they want to do. But they can always try and know that they did it. And that's more important than always wondering if they ever could or would or should or didn't have the money to or didn't have the ability to or didn't know that they could go. Just to give somebody the opportunity to really do it and find out before they're too old or too tired or never got a chance. And I want kids to be able to take our classes to do that thing if they want to do it. Did whatever they want to create, that they should create it. If you live in St. John or close by, come on by. Show starts November 5th. The St. John Arts Center. Website is sjartscenter.ca. Check it out. If you're from out of town, maybe give them a call, make a donation. If you're going to be there, please pick up a piece of artwork, send a kid to art class. Or if it just speaks to you, buy it. <laughs>